You've had some time to look back at year one at UC. How would you grade it? Yeah, I don't know if I, I, don't know if I look at it like that. Um, you know, I, I think there's some things that I'm really proud of. Um, like we, we, our staff, our, our players, like we set some foundational standards that are really important in terms of how we work, how we approach every day. Um, you know, the kind of togetherness that we want on a day in, day out basis. We had some good moments. Um, did we play and perform night in, night out at the standard that we, we expect to or that you, you, you have to at this place? No. And I think we understand that. Um, so there's some aspects of, of year one that I'm proud of, and there's some things that we have like a burning fire to address and, uh, and improve, and, and that's what we're doing basically every single day. It seems like you're talking a lot about culture. How far away is that culture from where you want it to be? Yeah, you know, I don't think whatever your buzzword is for that like day-to-day -day approach and mentality, um, if you want to use the word culture, I don't think you ever arrive there. There's no arrival. There's no, you're there, you made it. You're, you're constantly evolving. You're always working on that. Um, again, I think if you, if you take a step back and go, where are we today? There's some things and some... Uh, improvement that I'm proud of. Uh, but if you ask where we are today, I'm, I'm not happy. We, we got a, lo a long way to go and a lot of things to work on. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's, what, that's what today is about. And that's what this off season is about. So we're doing some good things, but we, we got a fire burning to go out and improve right now and, and get better today. What is the biggest thing you're trying to improve this off season? I don't know if there's one big thing. Um, you know, there, there's a number of things in a number of different areas. But if, if uh, you know, one thing we wanted to do was, you know, build a roster that made more sense in, in terms of how it fit together. Uh, you know, I, I think we wanted more positional size. I think there were times that we looked out on the floor last year and, you know, we were just really small position by position. Now, you know, you might have Abdul Adu who's – you know, 6'11", and a, a, a major presence at the center position. Um, you know, maybe John Newman in that lineup has good positional size, but just one through five, we were small. If you look at it position by position, we wanted to make sure that we got longer and more athletic and more dynamic physically. You know, I, I think we've done that. I think we, we added more depth to our team. I think we wanted to add, you know, more offensive firepower. You know, I think at times, you know, we relied so heavily on a couple guys to generate our offense in the half court. We, we wanted to be able to, to kind of spread that out a little bit more. And so whether it's returning guys, improving their games, or it's guys that, that we added to the roster, we think we've become more offensively dynamic. Um, so, so those are areas that, you know, in terms of putting a team together, you're trying to improve. And then there's areas on the floor you're trying to improve. There's, there's areas within the team dynamic. There's areas within the staff. And we could go on and on and on. Uh, I guess the theme is we're just obsessing about improving and, and trying to keep taking steps to get better. Improving, one of the big things that has come up in the offseason across UC Athletics is the move coming up to the Big 12. AD John Cunningham said in a press conference that, you know, it's going to be hard for teams to focus on this year because they're going to be looking ahead. How much truth is there to that for your program? You know, I, I, don't, um, I don't think that's going to be a challenge for us. I, you know, I think there's so many things – in college athletics or in college basketball that are out of our control. I mean, there's just so much stuff day to day uh, or in the future that are completely out of our control. And so we're going to try to spend our energy focusing on things we can control. And that's what's in front of us today and, and how we improve and get better. And that'll be our approach, you know, whether it's it's looking at this Big 12 move, um, you know, or other all this realignment that's happening across college athletics again or you know, what the schedule is, I, whatever the dynamic, you know, an injury here, whatever the dynamics are, we're not going to get caught up in the things we can't control. We're just going to just focus on getting better today and, and kind of keep our heads down. And, and I think that'll be our team's approach. So when you look at this Big 12 move, certainly are we preparing for it? Yes. Are, are, are we aware of it in our recruiting? Yes. Um, but it's not going to change how we approach this upcoming season. You mentioned recruiting. So many people, just a broad strokes, are saying, UC is moving to the Big 12. That means it's going to help with recruiting. How much have you seen that play out so far? Well, I think on a very fundamental level, um, you know, Cincinnati basketball is Cincinnati basketball. And 
Uh, there's been a tradition and history of this program competing at the highest level for 60, 70 years. You know, and it hasn't mattered what league you're in. Great players want to play at Cincinnati. Great players have played at Cincinnati. So I think there's a foundational component to being here that I don't care what league we're in, we feel like we can recruit and attract the best players. Uh, but being in the Big 12 or the move to the Big 12 has impacted recruiting positively. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think kids want to play in the, in the best leagues against the best competition on the biggest stage. Uh, the Big 12 has been the best basketball league in America over the last four or five years. You have the last two national champions. You have the highest league Kimpom rating, the highest league net rating. I mean, you know, multiple teams in the NCAA tournament. It's been the best league in college basketball here in the last few years. Kids want to be a part of that. So we have seen some boost there for sure. Kids clearly want to be a part of it. More than ever, we're seeing the Cincinnati hat, not maybe more than ever, in recent years, the Cincinnati hat on the table with major current Blue Bloods. Besides the Big 12 move and the history of Cincinnati, what has kind of been the pitch into the transfer portal or recruits without getting into too much specifics? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the pitch number one is we are who we are, you know, and here are the things that we value, you know, and I'm not going to go on a monologue, but it's, you know, we're, we're about competitors. We're about a certain level of type of work ethic every day. We're going to be in a disciplined environment. You know, th there's a people in Cincinnati know this, there's, there's a certain type of individual uh, that's going to thrive in this community and there's a certain type of approach to sports or to basketball that's going to thrive and fit at this university and in this community and we think that our values to program align with that and so we pitch that first in recruiting. This is who we are and this is why we think you fit here. Um, and if you don't, don't come here. And so I think, on, again, on a very foundational level, that's what it is first. But then it's well, also we have this incredible fan base and this passionate community about athletics and about bas college basketball and, and UC basketball. Um, you know, we're, we're now, if you look at the university, it's just on this upward trend, right? You look at the athletic department I and mean, look at what our football team's done. And we, we, we do, we, we talk about Coach Fickle and, our football program and the college football playoff and, you know, the power of the, the you know, the CPAW and the brand. Um, you, you look at the Big 12, we, we do talk about all these things that are creating all this positive momentum. But the one thing I want to be clear on when it comes to recruiting, we do talk about the things that matter most and that's who we are every day. You mentioned Coach Fickle. What is your relationship like with him? It's been great and, and I give him a lot of credit for that, you know. Um, uh, I got the job late last spring and I think it was my you know maybe second day here on the job and I, he was it was about an hour before his spring game and I realized that's a big deal as a college football coach and he's popping into my office to say hello you know and to spend some time and um, you know he uh, him and his wife had our staff and uh, we didn't have our fan our staff didn't have our families in town yet but just had our staff over with his staff to their house last May. I mean, he's made, those were early efforts, but he's made consistent efforts to, to kind of, uh, you know, make this an easier transition uh, to build a relationship with me. And it's meant, meant the world to me because I know that somebody in his position doesn't have to do that. So I think I'm as a friend now, uh, somebody that I respect, somebody that I've tried to learn from. Um, and, and it's been amazing just in the short period of time to see what he's been able to do with this football program. You spoke about the passionate fan base here. This is going to be your first time, and a lot of the fans in a few years that the Crosstown Shootout, it's happening with fans here. How excited, how much does that mean to that program that it's coming back with fans to Fifth Third? Yeah, I mean, an incredible experience last year leading up to the game. I mean, I, I think I said this to somebody on a podcast earlier today. You know, it's not just a game. It's like a week-long event. <laughs> it feels like the Crosstown, and that... That, that's just neat. It's just the kind of stuff that, you know, it's like the kid in you. You want to be a part of those types of things. And I knew that when I took the job, but experiencing it just kind of reiterates it even more. Um, you know, I wasn't pleased with how we played, but just the electricity and the atmosphere of that game on the road w was something. Uh, it'll be even better here at Fifth Third, and, and I look forward to, uh, to, to experiencing that here at home with our fans. Um, I, I do, do want us to play a little better basketball than we did last year, so that's something we think about every day. 
Fans have their sleeves rolled up, looking to see who's coming in, who they think is going to be the big breakout player this year. Who do you have your eye on that you think is going to make a big impact, make a big leap this year? Yeah, you know, I, I think everybody has an opportunity to. Um, I look at our returning players first. Um, you know, we, we returned four guys that started most of our games last year, <laughs> some other guys that played really significant, min significant minutes. All of those guys have, have the opportunity to take a significant step forward. I think for the most part they've approached this offseason the way that we'd want them to approach it. So it would be really interesting to kind of see who emerges here. We're still in the middle of the summer. There's still a lot of postseason basketball left for these guys to improve. And then we have six newcomers, and they have opportunities as well. Um, so I think to single out one guy in July would be a little unfair uh, because they're still kind of – we're just halfway through our summer program, and, you know, we don't take the floor, I think, until November. So there's a lot of practice and a lot of work left to be done. But there's some significant opportunities for, for every one of our guys. Well, well, let's get away from basketball for a second. If you don't mind, we're going to do – we're WCPO 9, nine questions rapid fire before we wrap up. That cool with you? Yeah, let's do it. All right. It's been about a year here in Cincinnati. Favorite restaurant? There's a lot. Okay. Um, the rapid fire. That, that's not a. That's an impossible rapid <laughs> fire answer. Uh, like it all depends on what kind of food, and some of my favorite places aren't good for my health. Uh, but because of it's convenient to where I live, probably E and O is where I eat most consistently. I love sushi, uh, and I eat there all the time. But there's so many places to to single. Wonder, I mean, Montgomery Inn, uh, I love that. I have my radio show there. Uh, I, I probably eat too much, too much there. Because I, I go there, I eat <laughs> ribs and macaroni and cheese. Um, you know, the, the place that it wouldn't be a true restaurant that I eat the most frequently uh, is Grater's Ice Cream. And I, I'm trying to, to cut that habit, but I drive by one every night on the way home and it stays open until 11. And I'd say, you know, this is not an exaggeration. It's sometimes this year, five, six nights a week, I'm eating graders, trying to get that down to more like three or four. But that's become a really bad habit. I've, I've always had a sweet tooth. Um, but there's, there's so many places. Uh, I, I, listen, I've enjoyed everything from, you know, Skyline Chili to, to Ruby's Steakhouses and everything in between. I, the, the food is definitely underrated in Cincinnati, and I've told a lot of people that. Well, you took the second question right out of my mouth. Yeah. Favorite Grater's ice cream flavor? Yeah, if this one isn't like a popular answer. I just love cookie dough. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cookie dough guy. So I, I used to be a Ben and Jerry's cookie dough guy, but Gr Grater's has won me over. Those chunks, they get you. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite non-sports spot to hit in Cincinnati? I, I, I'll tell you what, I really, I really like OTR. Favorite rival for UC basketball that you've experienced so far? Oh, that's the layup. I mean, <laughs> uh, the, the crosstown for sure. Favorite Bearcat tradition? Hmm. You know, there's a there's a really cool tradition to how introductions were done at one point here. That, that favorites the. Rapid fire, so I'm sure I'll think of something that's more meaningful. Uh, but just thinking off the top of my head, there's a really cool tradition at one point to how introductions were done at games, and that's something we'd like to try to bring back. Former coach, favorite Roy Williams-ism? Ism? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's impossible, too, because there's a lot of them. You know, I think probably his ability to turn every curse word into a non-curse word. It's, it's, that's, that's probably a daggummit and all that kind of stuff. Something you emulate? Like, meaning, is that something you emulate to do? My players I would say no. I, I, just, I just, just curse. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite sport, not basketball? Whew. Golf. Because okay. I heard some rumors about tennis. I like tennis. But golf is the thing? Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned Skyline Chili before. One to ten, and what's your order? Oh, I get a four-way. And one to ten, how good it is? Yeah. Uh, I mean, nine, ten. I mean, it's great. I, I, I'm trying to watch my diet, so I don't eat it as frequently as I'd like, but it's really good. Chris Lepore on our staff, who's our uh, uh, chief of staff, 
he goes four or five nights a week with his kids. So I, I'm, I'm trying not to eat Skyline as much as Chris, but, but I do like the taste of it just like he does. It seems like the secret of Cincinnati basketball is skylining graders on the way home. <laughs> then I'm not staying in shape. <laughs>